call no rhyme for orange. Orange signifies the joining of the colors gold and red. Red for blood, red for fire. Orange um, is and gold together um, create something that is royal, regal, and hot. So, and there is no rhyme for orange. That's the reason why I did this piece. There's no rhyme for orange. So when you were creating this piece, is there, do you have a pattern in your mind of how you're gonna lay out the different pieces of fabric? Sometimes, usually not, yeah. Um, I collect fabric and I've collected fabric over the years. And I noticed some years ago that the majority of my pieces have orange in them. I think orange is my favorite color, I really do, because it signifies all the things that I just talked about. This is She Thought She Bought Enough to Be. This is about people who think they can buy their way to happiness. Um, you can see at the bottom of it where the grounding, where the uh, chakra of stability is, where she's got wealth, she's got money, she's traveled, she's been places, she does things, she's got cars, she's got jewelry, and as you move up the chakras to her face, she never is happy. And so to you, this represents today's woman? Not, not just today's woman, some women. Those who think they have to buy their way to happiness and they never are happy. This is a kiss, a kiss from the ancestors. Um, I like music and I usually play music every time I'm making a piece. But it occurred to me when I started with these little masks, oh this is made of like 40 little masks that are beaded and put together into one figure. Uh, it occurred to me that jazz, which is one of my favorite kinds of music, um, is the combination of African rhythms and European uh, melodies. So I created this piece to reflect that. The ancestor figure has both um, white and gold backgrounds in the, in the beaded mask, and they come together to kiss the child, which is jazz. How long did it take you to create this piece? Two years. Two years. Yes. Yeah. And where did you start? I couldn't tell you because I started doing it with the little mask, and they run down all down the neck right into here. You can't even see all of them. But I started with the little masks and began to put the little masks together. And when you were putting the little masks together, did you have in your head that you were creating a, a face? No. No, it just sort of evolved. This piece is about black women, black girls, how we start out as little ones and are molded along life with challenges and with influences. Um, and it seems to me that there are always dual forces that are in opposition of each other. Um, just like the beginning here with the Egyptian piece, the two women who are braiding each other's hair, we need those dual forces on the one hand in order to um, decide which way we want to go. But on the other hand, they can be very detrimental if they keep fighting each other. So that's the reason why I have the faces going opposite each other and these faces going into each other. And these up here represent the bitch, <laughs> the, the evil one and the nice one coming together. So that's what that's about. So would you say that it's true that sometimes women have to be what's called a bitch sometimes? It's called to be two-faced. Yeah, you have to be in order to make it. You're the, you're the devil and the, and the angel at the same time. Yep. This one is representative of a series of black and white pieces that I'm doing. 
um, it occurred to me that black and white are so different, but then again, they're really not, um, depending upon how you look at it. Um, it did happen, though, that within this piece, the white pieces don't have any depth or you really can't see them from a distance except as a blob unless I put the, um, the intricate quilting in them. So I have a whole series of these black and white pieces that are, uh, that are in contrast with each other. And it looks like there's some stains. Do, is that important in any way? Yeah, I did that deliberately. I put a tea bag on some of these spaces just to give the white a little more depth. Mommy quilt. Um, I collect fabric and have collected it over the years and I found this piece that had multicultural mothers in as the subject matter of the fabric so I put it together this way with all kinds of colors all kinds of uh, different fabrics silks and linens some some cottons um, and put mommies in the corner and a baby in the middle just to represent birthdays at the bottom and celebration of women at the top because we're the only ones that are going to have the babies. So this is a mommy quilt. I have a series of, of mini quilts called Toilet Terrors. I think it's kind of funny. Those things that happen to women when they're in the bathroom or leaving the bathroom, it's nothing gross. I mean, it's, it's not like that at all. But this piece is called There's a Man in the House. You know how you get up in the middle of the night and he has left the toilet seat up and you literally fall in? I wanted to document that on fabric. I thought it was kind of funny. Women love these pieces.